Hey everybody, this is Lozzy. My name is Cody. You are watching the Friday episode of the Christian News Show thing that I do. And according to the polls, the debates were a tie. And to get you those numbers, 48% of the polls said that they thought that Ryan won, and 44% thought that Biden won. So Ryan does have the upper hand a little bit, but when asked if people were changing their minds because of the debate, people said it didn't really affect their opinion. And because this is the Christian news show thing that I do, we need to talk about the religion part. Last Wednesday I did say that because both candidates are Catholic, if religion did come up in the debates, it would probably be right here. But I was really surprised that the moderator Martha Raddatz was the one who brought it to attention. And as I said, she wanted to get two different Catholic worldviews on the idea of abortion. Paul Ryan pretty much saying, yes, I am Catholic, but that's not the reason that I am pro-life, because I've had a kid, I've seen the ultrasound, I've seen this kid in a womb, and that is where I base my opinion. And on Joe Biden's side, he says, yes, I'm Catholic, and that has shaped my views greatly. That is what I base my beliefs on. But I have no right as a human being to tell other people that because of my religious beliefs, that's the way they need to believe also. So yeah, that happened, and they talked a lot about foreign policy before that, so if you're into the foreign policy part, you do need to go check it out. You can find the debate anywhere on the internet. Google's a thing. I have a friend who's going to the military to ask him what he thought about the foreign policy type stuff with the debates. He said the way he sees it, Obama is trying to help the soldiers right now, but Romney would help them in the long run. And now he's just trying to decide which is more important. The next story I think is common sense, but you... What is that anymore? Pastor Greg Laurie from California says that people need to start headlining Jesus during their church services. And he has a really good point because when you go to church services anymore, it seems like you have this sermon that they try to hurry through and then they get you music. And if they're not doing that, then they're trying to pull you in with donuts or coffee or something. And so according to Greg Laurie, you shouldn't have the best donuts or the best music. You need to be worried about getting the message out the best way possible, making that exciting and easy to learn about. And I think he has a really good point. The church that I go to right now, we get the music out of the way first, then we have this two minute intermission, which is weird, but kind of cool. And then we have the sermon. And it's just something that makes sense. You have a church so you can give the message to people. So you should make the message, be the headliner, be the important thing, be the reason that people want to go to your church. And then our next news story is more of an apology than anything. Because in the past, often I've used WND.com as a news source. Because every time I look at it, it seems like more and more it's turning into this Christian tabloid where they talk about celebrities and politics and things people care about and they just try to make it look bad in the Christian eye. Now for me, they have been an interesting read and they do catch my eye because that's what they're supposed to do. But I promise to try to refrain from using the website as much as possible because I don't know if the facts in it are factual. And the reason I say this is because they had an article on the ring that Obama wears and according to them, it says there's no God but Allah. Now, I said before, I definitely don't know enough about the Islam faith, but according to the website, it's the first line, like a Muslim pledge thing. To be honest, I don't really know. I don't really care if it's a Muslim ring or whatever, but the fact that I haven't read this anywhere else, and I'm just seeing it on this WND website where I see a lot of different hateful things where they're just kind of judging and trying to make people look bad, it kind of makes me think that it was probably fabricated and not true. Now maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but because I can't find the facts on it to know whether this website is credible or not, I'm just, I'm not going to use it. So, so you guys know. And I personally think the final story today is pretty interesting, and that is that the United States is the fastest growing mission field according to Unfinished Magazine. And the argument for this is that a lot of people go on mission trips to different countries so they have that cultural difference. But the United States is so diverse that you can have that cultural difference in your own city. Now, personally, I have to argue you don't need that cultural difference to do mission work, but I do see the point. Kind of reminds me of an old song called Send Me from Lecrae, where he says we're supposed to make disciples of all nations, but have we made disciples in our own nations? I think the question has to be asked, should we be spending all the money that it takes to go to different countries for mission trips if we can't take care of ourselves? And I think when you ask that question, you are going to get the answer, yeah, we should be worrying about these other countries because they're much worse off than we are. So it's kind of this thing where there's a yes, and there's a no, and there's truth to both sides. Then again, it is very true that there are a lot of people in the United States that really genuinely need help. So for the question of the day today, I want you guys to brainstorm. I want to know all the different ways that we can think of that we can help our neighborhood or even our city. And anything else, I don't want you to be shy on this. I know you guys have great ideas. There's been times in the past where I'm like, I care about this, so I want everyone to pray about it. You're like, if you really cared about it, you would do something about it. And I'm like, you know, you're right, we should do stuff. Faith without action is dead. It's kind of a Christianese thing that we say. If you don't do anything but you believe in it and you don't take action, then uh, what, what good's your faith? 
So everybody, please leave a comment in the comment section below with your answer. Leave a video response if you want. That's all that I found interesting to do today. So in closing, let the haters hate, let the Christians pray. To everybody, like, subscribe. See you later, and God bless.